if you really want to work here, just ask yourself, why do you want to do that? Is it just a question of money? Is it just a question of exposure? Hi Rafikis, welcome back to my channel. If you are no subscriber, if you are new, welcome to my channel. My name is Kylie and today I am joined by a special guest who I'm going to let introduce himself shortly. But I just thought I'd introduce this new series to you guys first. So it's on careers and yeah, I'm just going to be bringing on a few people who have more experience in their careers to give us advice that we can, you know, learn from. In this first episode we have Anthony. I'm going to just let him tell us a bit about himself and then we can move on from there. Um, I'm Anthony, Kylie's friend, so I think today is actually our one-year anniversary. Yeah, it actually is, yeah. Uh, it's our one-year anniversary, so I guess uh, this is very fitting. Um, I work in investments. I've been in London for the last uh, a year or so. Um, before that, I worked in Nairobi, same field. I've been doing this for the last uh, six years. Um, yeah, so uh, my speciality is in project finance, and that's what I've been doing. But I didn't always start off with that. I started in uh, equity research, investment banking, that sort of thing, and then uh, moved on to, to project finance, which is a bit more specialized. Okay. You've talked about how you've sort of like not always been doing what you've been doing. But before we get into that, I just want you to just give us a brief history of your academic journey. Well, I guess my academic journey was not uh, particularly interesting. There's no fanfare. It's uh, my typical 844 guy. Yeah. Um, went to Lenana School, then went to University of Nairobi after that. Okay. Um, nothing. I would not say I was even an extraordinary student. I was just an average student. Um, if I think about it that way, and yeah, um, so nothing, nothing out of the ordinary. Yeah. Um, uh, as you said, no international schooling. I don't even have a master's. If I, um, yeah, so that's no pomp, no fanfare. But that's actually quite interesting, you know, because most people assume mm -hmm. that you have to, you know, have a certain international education, you know. I'd say what you need is not uh, an international education. Um, what you need is a skill set. Mm -hmm. um, and um, skills, like anything, can be learned. I mean, you can learn to code for as good as an engineer in Google, even if you're in Kenya, if, if that makes sense. Yeah. So a lot of the things that um, helped me even when I was doing my interviews or working were actually things that were self-taught. Self -taught. Um, and you know, these are things that you learn online, these are things that you learn from getting a book in the library, reading, I don't know, The Economist or Financial Times or all these things, and just a lot of Google work. Okay. It's not stuff that someone will go and teach you in a class. Yeah. Um, and in, it's very interesting because even even in my day-to-day -day job, nobody ever really asks you. I don't even know what half of my colleagues, where they went to school or what they studied. Yeah. I don't even know uh, because it really just gets you through the door. Actually, I, I think it gets your application through the door. But um, it's what you've learned either in working and... Um, which you've taught yourself, yeah. those are the things that matter. Okay. So if I was to give uh, your viewers advice on this, I'd probably say, um, even if you're starting out, don't be led a lot by the money. Just try and think, um, if I go work for person A or this firm, yeah. is there anything that I'm learning? I see. And, and those are the things that sort of build up, and that's how you sort of build up your skill set. So think about it that way. Don't, um, I, I mean, School is good, but that just gets you through the door. Um, to yeah. think about it that way, it's, it's a skill set that you acquire through you know, working in specific farms, um, doing specific tasks, um, and a lot of it, the bulk of it, will be through your self-education. Now, just following off that, I think it would be interesting to know how for you you were able to, to realize one. Okay, mm -hmm. you've mentioned that you worked on those skills, but mm -hmm. how are you able to identify your skill set how are you able to especially like coming out of university mm -hmm. right say 
going into your first job? Well, that's an interesting question, Kylie. Um, so let me separate two things. Let okay. me decouple two things for, for you guys. One is a skill set. And I think when people ask the question about skill set, what they really want to know is how do you identify what you want to do, what do you want to expend a lot of your energy doing. Um, how, how was it for me that I identified, you know, I want to work in investments? Yeah. How do you know you want to do commercial law? Um, and I guess that's a very, very personal journey to everyone. Um, yeah. But if I could give you a few guidelines, I'd say one, ask yourself what kind of impact do you think you can have on the world? I know it sounds very cliche and people say it all the time, but it's you ask yourself. It doesn't have to, there's no right or wrong answer. I think you should even highlight the you who are performing. You, yeah. <laughs> um, you, it's a very, very personal journey. So what impact do you think uh, you can have on the world? Do you want to reduce poverty? Do you want to, I don't know, end child infant mortality? Do you, whatever you want to do, that's what impact do you honestly think you can have on the world? And, um, think about it like just go crazy on that one uh, make a list or whatever just think about things that appeal to you then you have to think the second step of this would probably be um, think about how the constraint so you can't obviously do anything so what do you like doing what do you what do you enjoy doing um, mm -hmm. and what don't you enjoy doing those are, those are the two I mean not everybody is a good public speaker so if, if you're thinking about a career you know doing grant fundraising probably won't work for you if you're not a good public speaker and that's all right yeah um and then uh the third part of it would probably be to think about um the, the, you know get into the granular aspect of how you design a career what industries appeal to you um is it investment banking is it law is it uh, architecture what appeals to you personally and again that word you it, there's no right or wrong answer yeah and um Think about it. If you what about that industry appeals to you? What uh, if you, if you can think of someone that you admire, um, or at the highest level of that industry, when you're there, um, what do you aspire to be? What do you admire about those people? And then think about um, a mid-level role. Mm -hmm. Does that still appeal to you? And if you can think about it that way, how do you start? How, what's the mid-level role? Does, I mean, what does the bottom level apply to you? Do you like it? Do you, when you think about the mid-level role, does, does that also apply to you? Uh, does that also appeal to you? Sorry, and the top level role, does that also appeal to you? So that you get a, a brief or a sense of where you might want to work. And most jobs are all about three things. You make something, you sell something, or you support people who sell something. Mm -hmm. That's all. In, in all fields, it's about those three things. So think about that as well. Um, the other thing I would think about is, um, do you want to be a principal or an agent? Mm -hmm. So, uh, I have, I mean, this is London, so you know, there are a lot of auditing, f uh, you know, we know a lot of people who are in audit. Yeah. Um, and an auditor is a good example of a person who is an agent. Mm -hmm. um, so they help people who actually make decisions. Yeah. So do you want to be the person who helps people who make decisions or do you want to be on the hook for the advice? That's, uh, that's something to think about. And you know, as I ask these questions, there are places that you're leaning towards more than others. Yeah. And those should act like sort of your constraints, you know. Um, I don't feel like I'd like to do this, I'd like to do this more. Yeah. And again, very personal journey, to suggest my two cents. And then finally think about um, the money. I think deliberately I'd put the money last. Mm -hmm. So if you're a person who, um, I don't know, you enjoy your vacations, you yeah. love your vacation so much, I mean, you probably would not want to go and do charity work because maybe there's not a lot of money in that but maybe you're not someone who enjoys those things those yeah. things don't appeal to you so think about that as well it's important but don't um give it uh, don't give it more importance than it deserves i mean money is good everybody wants some of it you need you know you need it to live but Think about it that way. Don't let it guide your career decisions, which is what I feel a lot of people, people do, yeah. especially when they are starting out. 
Um, a lot of people tend to get into careers because of the money and they don't really ask the question, um, is this something I really want to do? Is this mm-hmm. something that appeals to me? Yeah. So. Uh, That's a definitely true. I remember when I was starting off like in Kenya, now mm-hmm. I've just finished my undergraduate, I've gone back. So, you know like law, especially mm-hmm. in Kenya when you start off, yeah. you earn 10,000 shillings. Yeah. Like up until you become, um, you start your pupillage maybe, or you actually become admitted. That's yeah. when, yeah. You earn, and still then you earn like 30k, 40k. Yeah. It's not a lot of money yeah. in the grand scheme of no, things. It's true, it's true. So, it was so easy to see like other people getting into other jobs mm-hmm. and you see someone is going, they're doing like marketing, they're getting paid like from the get go like 70k, 80k. Yeah, no, no, I remember. And I, it's tempting. Yeah, yeah no, it's I really remember. tempting. I remember my similar experience. Um, my first job, I was paid 15,000. And uh, people who I went to school with at that time, well, their first job was probably 85,000. So, and I remember yeah. my dad was leaving, was like, how can you, what, what is wrong with you? Like, yeah. why, why, why would you accept a salary like this? But again, I mean, I knew that's the career I wanted to be into. And yeah. uh, that's, this specific farm allowed me to do that. So, yeah. yeah, so. So it's identifying like what, what you can gain from the farm other than, or whatever you choose to work, other than just the money. Yeah. Because, um, my uncle usually likes to say this, I don't know how to fit it, but he's always like, you know, do what you want to do. Because I was conflicted, like, do I want to do human rights law mm. or commercial law? And yeah. you know, everyone tells you commercial is where the money is. Yeah. And it's like, imagine if you're doing something mm. that you enjoy, mm-hmm. the money will always follow. That's true. And there's a part of that sentence that I want you to remember. Do what appeals to you. There, there's yeah. no... And, and it's a bit of a misnomer when we come here and talk about career and give career advice, but uh, no one can really give you career advice if you mm. think about it. I can tell you what my experiences have been, but that is very unique to me. Yeah. And there's also something that people don't tell you about careers. Is there's also a huge element of luck in these things. I, see. I think that's a good answer to the skill set um, question. It even helps me, you know, uh. sort of think about <laughs> like what I want to do and you know where I'd see myself. At least, even in, I know I'm going into law, but at least which side, you know, yeah. where I fit in. Next question would be, when you go, say, into an interview, mm-hmm. um, now this is for, say, people like me who are just getting into, beginning their career, or people who, say, want to make a change in their career. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's always this question, like, what are you bringing to the table? Mm-hmm. Sort of like, what makes you a suitable candidate or a good candidate? Mm-hmm for this role, what makes you better than the next person? So mm-hmm. how would you um, advise someone to go about sort of answering that question or even so identifying? We've talked about like skill set, but you know, it's one thing to like something and yeah. it's another to be good at it. Yeah. So I, I think a lot of interviewers, um, when, they're, when they're asking that question, they can already sense, they can already sense what makes you different. So it's looking at what you've done. I see. Um, do you have a career that's shaping up to something? So maybe you intern at a human rights law firm, and yeah. you know you have uh, you've done a lot of work that's progressively shown that you know I'm a unique candidate. I'm different in the sense that this is actually something I'm interested in. This is something I've been focusing yeah. on. Um, so it's it's not the answer that you give to that question that matters. I would not say. I, I mean, everybody says something like, yeah you know something that makes them different but you actually have to be different yeah that's the point so um i would not say that there's a specific answer that you give but i'd say you honestly have to show that you're different um so and again very personal journey so, so craft your careers curate them the way you guys curate your uh, uh, instagram instagram, feed, instagram yeah. photos you know like specific so this is a story you want to tell yeah so think about it that when you take an assignment when you take a role when you take a job yeah how does that add to your story the story that you're telling mm. and this i mean uh, flows back to the point that i was saying on think about the highest person that works in a particular field that you want to be like yeah think about how that journey of theirs has been you'll see very deliberate steps yeah um, people taking certain assignments or doing certain roles uh, and that's how you should think about it 
Um, just building on that now, I think I want to move on to tips for someone who may be in Kenya and now they're looking to sort of like make the shift. Um, like I mentioned earlier, I think you're a very good person to answer this question because you're you're unique, I'd say, to some extent, because most people who come or end up working in London, either one, they studied here, mm -hmm. or two, maybe they came on some sort of like secondment program. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to get into um, the job market here because you're not just competing with your fellow countrymen, you're competing with people from all across the world. So yeah. um, maybe you can shed some light on that. So two things. One, um, I guess what makes the UK market very competitive is even for the employers that um, are looking to hire people, even if it's international candidates, it's actually an extra cost for them to do that because they have to think about um, certificates of sponsorship, mm -hmm. you know, moving you around and relocating you, that sort of stuff. Yeah. And um, uh, quite frankly, that does not appeal to to a lot of UK okay. employers. So, yeah. um, and um, and rightfully so. So, if you if you if you really want to come and ask yourself, like, why do you want to do it here? I mean, the, the, the London is known for two main industries: it's law and finance. So, ask yourself, like, why why do I want to you know to move into the, to move to London? But yeah. um, then I'd ask you to think about. Um, employers that actually have inter you know like that sort of diversity international candidates because it's not everyone that that appeals to so yeah. and what you have to offer them and that's why this comment is actually a very good path yeah uh, for most people and um, some people actually not here on second one what happens is they actually apply to their um, you know mother farm so if it's, okay. a, if it's an audit they actually resign and apply for new jobs here okay. but it's because they build networks in the company I see. Uh, through the you know through the staff network and what have you then it's, it's easier but it's actually that they get new jobs mm -hmm. and is what one two years then uh, you're back home back home uh, I see. Okay. so most people um, so most people actually apply for like new roles I see. Um, so quite a few quite a number you know that's how they they, they moved to the UK and it's because um, international farms with uh, global footprint have operations internationally, internationally so yeah. that makes a lot of sense That's so they like to hire people with a lot of local knowledge this is a question I'm just throwing in mm -hmm. um, how how are you so sure this is the path that I want to take don't you ever feel like there may be another job out there that may even be better for you very good question and I'll tell you this um, I think there's a huge misconception about um, purpose and um, people think about it and uh, they think about it in the sense that you can only do one thing yeah and um, once you it's the one you need to do one specific thing or else you'll fail at everything else which is a I very see. very very bad misconception in my mind yeah the only thing that matters, Kylie, is uh, two things. Okay. What brings you joy? Yeah. And how do you want to spend your energy? Okay. Those are the only two things. And there's that keyword, you. What brings you joy? Mm -hmm. And how, how do you want to meaningfully spend your energy? That's all. Yeah. You don't have to be on the right path. I don't think there's anything like the right path or the wrong path. You can change paths any time. Mm -hmm. well, you can do something and decide this no longer appeals to me. I no longer like what I'm doing. Um, and you know, you transition out of it or you transition to something else. Mm -hmm. So there's no certainty. It's just about you wake up every morning and you feel like um, I'm motivated to do this. Do I still like what I'm doing? That's the question. Yes. I think it's also like just sometimes there's this idea and I don't know if it's the way I was just brought up or the way the school system is. Mm. It's sort of like you're made to feel like it's a commitment you're making to this sort of like journey and it's like I have to be a hundred percent sure that this is what I want to do. No, I, 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 I know what you mean, I know what you mean and um, I think what I'd like to tell your viewers is um, that's, a, that's not um, uh, that's not the right way to approach it. I would not think about it that way. Mm -hmm. um, again, people make you feel 
Mm. But you see, this is a very, very personal. personal I'll, I'll keep hammering on that thing. It's yeah. a very, very personal journey. Yeah. Do what appeals to you. Um, um, I mean, and ask yourself what's important. Mm-hmm. Um, what's important to you. Careers are changing. Careers are changing. Like, true. Some days I actually genuinely think my career in 10 years, that role doesn't exist yet. Uh, this is true. Um, yeah, so I think I've covered all of the questions I had for you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for agreeing to do this. I really do appreciate it. I'm sure the viewers as well appreciate it. And hopefully, I know I've learned a lot from this. Hopefully other people have picked up. You know, there's always one thing I wanted to say in this video. Hit the subscribe button. Ah, thanks. Is it up? Is it down? Is it it's up? down. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for coming. Guys, you've heard, hit the subscribe button. Like, share, comment. And remember, it's about you. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.